On the 2nd of April, 2011, tragedy struck in the town of Norwich, Illinois, when a roller coaster accident maimed and killed three-year-old boy Jason Dansby in Go Bananas Indoor Amusement Park. Roller coaster accidents are devastating enough as it is, but when a child as young as three is involved, it becomes absolutely unbearable. In this video, we look at all the events that led up to this terrible incident as we seek to find the answer to the questions, how and why. This is the tragic tale of the Python Pit roller coaster accident. Formerly known as Jeepers, Go Bananas was an indoor amusement park located in Norwich, Illinois, USA. The amusement park was known for being a great place to hold birthday celebrations for kids. It performed this role by providing several roller coasters tailored to the needs of children, as well as skee ball and video game options. At this juncture, I think it's important to state that Go Bananas was permanently closed after more than 4,000 people signed a petition to shut it down in 2018. This was a result of a video of two adults literally going bananas and brawling in the establishment surfacing online. Perhaps the public simply got tired of the park's long history of violence, but it finally closed in March 2020. However, before then, Go Bananas was a popular place for kids and one of the thrill rides that made up their lineup was the Python Pit roller coaster. The Python Pit was a steel family indoor roller coaster that was made up of a single train with five cars. In each car, riders were arranged in pairs across a single row, making a total of 10 riders per train. The roller coaster could climb up to a height of 12 feet and also had a top speed of 16 miles per hour. On the day of the tragic accident, April 2nd, 2011, Jason and Lisa Dansby took their kids, Jason, and his twin brother to Go Bananas Amusement Park for a day of fun and games. The family was happy and excited for whatever adventures awaited them at the park. Little did they know that they would eventually come to regret this very decision as a terrible horror awaited them. While at the park, the twins rode the Python Pit roller coaster alone. This was because the operators had told their mother, Lisa, that there was no need for her to get on the ride with them. This was actually part of the new changes made in the safety requirements for the ride, which stated that children could board the ride safely without parental supervision. Lisa didn't think anything of it because, in her mind, the ride operators were the professionals in charge of keeping the riders safe, and the Python Pit was, in fact, a kid's ride. So, not wanting to be a helicopter mother, she left her precious little boys to enjoy the ride on their own. However, as soon as the train started moving, things began to take a very dark turn. Jason, who was super excited to go on this cool ride just a minute prior, began to feel a bit disturbed, and he inadvertently became quite restless. As a child, he naturally needed the comfort of his mother, and it was her that he was screaming for. He needed to know that everything was okay, and soon he began reaching out to her. When Jason realized his mother was not sitting beside him on the ride, he panicked. Unfortunately, this was only the catalyst to the downward spiral that was about to ensue. Little Jason cried and cried for the ride to stop. In his panic, he managed to slip out of the safety bar that was supposed to hold him down to his chair. It was at this point that things truly began to escalate, and even the other families on the ride became restless as well. A particular family of four, the Shahadi family, all leaned out of their seats to try and help calm Jason down while trying to protect him from falling over. When Jason's parents, who were spectating from the sidelines, saw him stand on his seat, their hearts dropped to their stomachs. Fear became a blanket that enveloped them entirely. But the fear, anxiety, and worry they felt were nowhere near enough to stop them from screaming at the operator to shut down the ride. However, they were all too late. Jason, the little boy who only wanted to be wrapped in his mother's embrace, slipped and fell between two of the moving cars of the train. The outcome was devastating. While slipping and falling through the space between these two cars, Jason was thrown around violently, slamming his head against their tough exterior and sustaining very serious head injuries before falling a few feet to the ground underneath the tracks. His wounds were so severe that he died on the spot. The Dansbys were devastated. Their little boy was gone right in front of their eyes while they could only stand on the sidelines and watch helplessly. They couldn't save him. As much as they tried, they couldn't save him. Jason was gone. Who would have thought that such a vibrant little boy would lose his life on a day that was meant for celebration? 
According to the boy's great uncle, Carl Jones, they were celebrating life. It was just a day out with the kids. In his words, that child had more spirit and joy than anything in the world. But now the question on everyone's mind was, what sort of safety restraint could be easily maneuvered by a three-year-old child? And why did it take the operator so long to shut down the machine? Surely everyone knows that children that young can't be trusted to take their safety seriously. So why would the safety bars of a roller coaster meant for children be that easy to slip out of? What was the point of the restraints if not to keep the passengers locked in place? If Jason could easily get himself free, was anyone truly safe? This tragic accident that happened to him was not, however, the first of its kind. In 2008, an eight-year-old child damaged her arm because she had her hands outside the ride. This simply proves that the ride's design was flawed at its root and did not account for children's unpredictable and curious nature. The investigations that ensued found that most ride operators in other states had already deemed the python pit too risky for children of Jason's height. A Kansas Family Entertainment Center even installed seatbelts on the ride, and operators in Michigan and Virginia raised the height requirement for a child to ride alone. In Go Bananas Amusement Park, however, there were no such restrictions. The state of Illinois found no problems with the ride itself during Jason's investigation. According to court records, Gerald Marks, the owner of Go Bananas, was charged with a misdemeanor under the Carnival and Amusement Ride Safety Act for failing to have maintenance records available for review. He was then fined $3,707 and sentenced to one year of probation. This ruling brings to light the state of amusement park laws in Illinois at the time. Unlike some other states, Illinois had no rules of its own to ensure the safety of little children. Instead, key safety decisions about height requirements and restraints were left to the manufacturers that designed the rides. Because of this loophole in the law, the state inspector didn't have the right to investigate whether the accident was caused by the manufacturer's height requirements or poor restraints. And since she couldn't find any evidence of any other issues, such as operator or mechanical issues, the inspector, Margaret Royer, declared the accident a case of patron error which means the accident was the victim's fault. In her words, had the child not stood up, the death would have more than likely not occurred. The state's Carnival Amusement Safety Board Chairman, Daniel Kirshner, however, described Jason's death as a failure on the part of the state. He lamented to the Carnival Amusement Safety Board, saying, This kid should not have died, and that scares the hell out of me because nothing has changed. The only thing we are saying here is, well, that kid shouldn't have stood up, what happens when the next kid stands up? Kirshner would later ask the board to start looking into the ride design standards used in other states in an attempt to copy them and change Illinois' amusement park safety laws so that a similar incident doesn't happen again. In the end, the judge ruled that the family of Jason should be awarded a settlement of $3.1 million from Go Bananas Amusement Park. However, no one was held legally responsible for Jason's death besides Jason himself. Even though the lawsuits ended in a very sad way, Jason Dansby's tragic death should serve as a strong reminder of how important rules and safety measures are when it comes to amusement park attractions. Another crucial thing to learn from this sad tale is how important it is for parks, and the state in particular, to strictly enforce height restrictions and age requirements. Amusement parks are not always reliable when it comes to making sure that roller coasters are safe enough and that guests follow safety rules. This is because these are businesses, and the main goal of any business is to make as much money as possible while spending very little on expenses. It then falls on the state to ensure that the parks follow the safety rules as religiously as possible to protect the people who patronize them. Finally, it is vital for amusement park visitors to be aware of the risks associated with roller coasters and to follow all safety rules and guidelines. Parents and guardians should also take responsibility for their children's safety and ensure that they are properly supervised and follow all safety rules while at the park. This tragic incident should be a strong reminder that anyone who rides a roller coaster runs the risk of being killed or seriously hurt. Luckily, these accidents can be avoided and visitors' safety can be made more certain if safety truly becomes a priority.